Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Renaud, Developmental Optometrist at Eagle Eye Performance Vision. I'm here to talk to you about oculomotor dysfunction, how it works, what goes wrong, and how to fix it. If you enjoy this video, you can follow along for other videos about vision that we have. Uh, follow along by subscribing, find us on Facebook and Instagram, and let's get started. Oculomotor dysfunction. This is someone who has a difficult time making accurate eye movements. So we often hear tracking or eye movements, uh, scanning movements, follow moving targets. These are different movements we make with our eyes that some people struggle with, a poor coordination of those movements. And our life around us is moving and we are looking at different targets. We need to point our eyes accurately at the information we are trying to gather, whether it's a word on the page as we scan across the page, whether it's finding the ball in the net in sports, whether it's finding different targets while driving, say looking for street signs or looking at stop signs, different things that we are trying to point our eyes to, to look at and understand and, and acquire information. So we need to be able to move our eyes onto different areas in our visual field. And it, it is a skill to be able to hit those targets accurately point our eyes where we want them and not do it inefficiently or ineffectively. So the oculomotor system can be broken down into three different skills. First, we have pursuits. That is following a moving target, keeping our eyes smoothly moving on target, as well as cades where we are quickly scanning our eyes, jumping between different targets, as well as the movement of not moving. So fixation is the ability to hold your eyes still, like making eye contact or looking at the basket before a free throw, being able to not move your eyes is a skill of movement as well. These visual skills are developmental and they're not always equal. Just like other muscles in our body, we can have poor coordination of eye movements. Plus, we have two different eyes that are moving, so they need to be moving together as a team. If they're moving at different speeds, different velocities, they're starting and stopping at different times, then the brain is trying to interpret two different eyes sending two different pieces of information. So how do we test this? So the developmental optometrist like myself is looking during their really thorough vision evaluation at how a patient can move their eyes through the following series of tests. So when I'm evaluating a patient's ability to follow a moving target, I'm watching for if their eyes can move smoothly or if I see them making jerky eye movements. I'm also watching for if they can keep their head perfectly still and if they can keep their eyes on target for a, for a decent period, at least 10 seconds. During saccades, I'm looking at how their eyes can move quickly and accurately. So there's two different targets where that they're scanning back and forth between. I'm watching for head movement, that would, be, that would be a problem, as well as can their eyes move accurately? Can they hit the targets? Can they hold steady and, and wait for me to instruct them to move their eyes? Or do they have any impulsivity in their eye movements? Are they undershooting, overshooting? Do they say they undershoot? That could be someone who makes lots of excessive eye movements while reading. If they overshoot, that's the candidate who's going to be skipping words a lot when they're reading. They jump right over the target. And during this test, their eyes need to move very quickly. When it's time to go, their eyes can go very fast. And during fixation, can they simply hold their eyes still and steady on a target for at least 10 seconds without looking away or without fidgeting around? Can they keep their visual attention on target for at least 10 seconds. So children who struggle with these skills, they can often fall behind in school because reading is such a huge visual challenge. Someone with oculomotor dysfunction could struggle in any of the following ways. They may notice that letters appear to move or swim or they merge together. They also maybe lose their place a lot when they're reading. Their eyes look off target and come back and they're not sure where they were. They may skip lines or repeat lines, jump over the small words. Uh, overall just having inaccurate reading eye movements. They may lose track of the columns in math. Maybe difficulty copying information. If there's lots of extra eye movements switching from near to far, then they lose their place on the board and then on their paper. Or reading speed and fluency. Again, if your eyes are moving in, in a lot of inefficient ways, then that's gonna interfere with how fast you can read and how choppy that, that verbal reading is. Because we, as, as the observer, we don't see their eyes moving inaccurately. We just hear their words coming out very robotic with lots of pauses. And they may need to reread for comprehension. So if you are reading through a sentence and you get the beginning and then the next couple words and then you go back and then you skip a line down and you are, you are just getting all these different words out of order, well, the only way to comprehend that may be that you need to reread it and make sense of what you previously struggled understanding. So oculomotor dysfunction can be present in those with a learning disability 
because they're having such a hard time getting their eyes on target while reading. So if your eyes can't find where the word is, how are you supposed to know what the word is? And oculomotor dysfunction can also impair other skills like sports, driving, a general coordination, really anything that you need to move your eyes for and find different targets in your world, which is just about everything. So now to the good part, once this is properly diagnosed, then these skills actually can be trained, developed, improved through optometric vision therapy. So we can change the brain and how the brain controls those eye movements, make those eye muscles more coordinated, uh, move more efficiently, less inaccuracy, uh, faster speeds, smoother, separation of eyes from head movement, and integration with all other visual skills of getting good information, processing it, making sense of what you see, expanding your peripheral vision. A good vision therapy program includes all sorts of things, including having really accurate eye movements. We usually work on having a more accurate right eye, more accurate left eye, and then have those two eyes work together to be a more accurate binocular visual system. Then once the patient improves, we want to repeat until they can make eye movements very effortlessly and efficiently with minimal effort. Their eyes are on autopilot, so their brain can put all of their attention and brain power into processing what they're looking at, understanding that word, knowing where to go next automatically instead of having to waste cognitive attention on trying to find your place over and over. And just about everyone can make progress, whether you are a young child or you're in elementary school, high school, whether you're an adult who's just finding out about this, if you're an adult who's had a concussion and you've lost some skills that you used to have and you need to rehabilitate them, once we have the right diagnosis and plan, then we can go through vision therapy to improve the problems in the exam room that are leading to the problems in your everyday life. Make sure to find an optometrist who specializes in vision therapy. You can find a provider at covd.org, or if you're in the West Michigan area, make sure to give our office a call or check out our website below. Thank you for watching. I hope this was a helpful video for you. Make sure to comment, like our video, subscribe along with us to learn more, and we'll see you next time.